What is up YouTube and welcome to this Flash video, the elongated night rises in one of my opinion the best shows or episodes even of the Flash ever but definitely possibly the best of this season actually. I'm probably going to say yeah it was my favourite one of this season by far. Now let's be honest Ralph Dibney a lot of people aren't too hot on him but I I absolutely love him and this is after Barry's trial of the Flash, well after Barry's trial, he actually had to step up and become, well, the Central City superhero, which, yeah, what about Wally West? Where's Wally West? Uh, where, where's Wally? Where, where's Wally? Should, should he have not, you know, stepped up considering his speedster mentor is actually in prison? <laughs> yeah, you would think so. But Wally West is coming to Legends of Tomorrow. So I guess they're just uh, saving him for some point. We know he's coming back in episode 15. But an elongated man, as he finally has his name here, has had to save the day. So this was very much an episode split down the middle in two. We had, well, the elongated man and the trickster. And also the prison storyline with Barry. Now this was a really, really good episode, like I said. So this really does deal with Ralph slowly becoming the hero. At the start, they they kind of had the pre the recap of the episode where he kind of really came into his own, and here he had to deal with his own mortality, which was really, really cool. So we really did have the fact that Axel Walker has returned. We saw him briefly return in the prison. I did actually recognise it without his mask and his hair, to be honest. He looks a lot different without that, to be honest. So we see the return of the trickster, where this is obviously not the, the, the trickster. This is the Axel Walker version, who in the comics was actually involved with the blacksmith and all things like this. So I really did like the fact that he was actually broken out of jail by his mother, the Harley Quinn knockoff. But yeah, we had Mark Hamill play the trickster in the 90s TV show. So this version of Prank is pretty much the same one from the 90s Flash TV show. So that's pretty cool. So it's a callback to that. And it is the same actress as well who played Prank on there. I did cover that in my preview of this episode at the weekend as well. So pretty darn awesome there. Now, the fact that she simply became mad instantly after not taking her medication was something which I found a bit odd, a bit jarring. And I have to say, the relationship with her son, with the minute she stopped taking her medication, was just weird. It just, we, we were watching it here, we felt like they were flirting, and it just felt really, really creepy, or maybe that's just me. But I really did like this storyline there, and, and this whole story with the Ellen Gatey man was great. I love the fact that they had that first fight, and he was like, hey, Fallout Boy, to the kid, uh, to actor Walker. was. I'm not sure if that's a reference to him dressing weird, like the band, or if it's a reference to Fallout Boy as in Radioactive Man in The Simpsons. Yeah, I don't know about that, to be honest, but it was it was pretty fun. Really, really fun, elongated man-centric episode. So that whole storyline really was, like I said, real, real fun. I think the Hartley Sawyer, who plays elongated man, really came into his own here. He had some great acting, and he just choose, chose to walk away the minute his own mortality was actually in question. So that does fit in with the the kind of character that very much in it for himself and he thought he could get all this glory and he, he, he wouldn't die. There's no danger for him. So we got that new suit which we saw in a really, really tiny box. Which, yeah. So if you don't know, that you've got the flash ring which comes out of a really tiny space. This is pretty much the precursor to the flash ring. So I think we're definitely going to get the flash ring on the show at some point. If you can do it with that, then I can't see why you can't do it with the flashy suit, to be honest, which really also needs some sort of stretchy or, or kind of different nature to it as well. Now, yeah, I really did like the fact that the suit looks really cool. It looks a lot better, I think, in action, just like Brainiac 5 on Supergirl as well. So he got his new suit and went to fight. So Team Flash really did work together. I found it really funny that they didn't actually work out where Trickster was. Obviously, they're going to go to a toy factory. Of course they are. 
why would you need a satellite to work out where they're actually going for that, to be honest? It's so completely obvious, and I don't know why um, Elongated Man wasn't able to do that, because, well, he is a private detective. It would be in his nature to actually do that. Very funny Easter egg as well with Bebo, the kind of Furby knockoff. That was actually in Legends of Tomorrow, and it was a toy that Martin Stein tried to buy for his daughter, and then it led her to actually being worshipped by Vikings. Yeah, if you don't watch Legends, that's going to make no sense. But go watch Legends, it's really good. So, yeah, that was that, and the, the, the pair are going to be coming back as well, I think, at some point. I expect Blacksmith to release the the both trickster and prank and I can't help but think that Mark Hamill will actually return as well at some point. We know he has escaped, so Prank did confirm that, so we will see more of that. But the prison, everything, it was a bit of a slow thing, very much, I would say, the B story to the main story of the trickster, just for the fact that not too much happened. We had the introduction of the trickster in there, and we also had Bill Goldberg, Goldberg the wrestler, who I am a huge Huge fan of WWE, and I was actually talking to Commie Chrissy on Twitter. Go and check him out. He's a great, great dude and has just released his first comic. We were just mentioning, all throughout the kind of hype up for this episode, we were mentioning Goldberg and things like that, and I'm super, super happy that Goldberg has decided to be in this show just because his kids actually watch it. So he's actually going to be in it next episode as well. So he was in the promo for the Incredible Shrinking Man episode so it's going to be really, really funny to see that. And I'm really excited for that. But Big Sir was the one who actually helped out Henry Allen. Seemingly, I, I imagine he, after his actual appendix was taken out by Henry Allen, he actually then was protecting him. And I forget that, he, you always forget that he's like a doctor, isn't it? You always for, I, I completely forgot all about that until they mentioned the actual appendix and reason why he saved him. And the Flash actually ended up using his powers twice in this episode to quell the riot, which makes sense. Although, it's weird on his tally chart, he just tallies it like 1-1-1. One, one, one. He doesn't, you know, put a cross when it, for the fifth one. Really weird. You'd think that a scientist would actually be doing it correctly. However, we he then went on to say Big Sir. I'm not sure if it's Big Sir S-I-R or Big Sir is in like that place in America. So, I'm not sure on that. So... That was really, really cool to be honest. I really, really did enjoy that part of the episode. And we will see him return. They're not taking this Trial of the Flash thing imprisonment very, very fast. They, they are literally just making or elongating this out a bit longer than I was expecting. Which I don't actually mind because you've got Ralph Dibney who is stealing the show. Some really, really cool bits of him surrounded by the media. The part with him at the start with that other villain, the kind of the guy with the bomb, was really, really funny. And I really, really, really want an Elongated Man TV show. I really, really want a spin-off at some point. Maybe him and Caitlin and Killer Frost will be pretty awesome. Killer Frost now has a new trigger word. It is the bully, so I expect that to come up at some point. Now, just some stray observations here. I found it really weird that Vibe and Killer Frost both use their hands. They were handcuffed. But they couldn't use their powers. Why? That just doesn't really make any sense. Now the big thing I was not expecting was the fact that the coffees, the celebratory coffees that our good friends Vibe and Elongated Man actually bought were bought by the mysterious girl from the Crisis on Earth X episode. Now that was the girl who was able and mentioned that she, she knew the bride and groom to Barry. At the wedding, so that's really, really weird. I did not expect her to return at all for at least maybe until the last couple of episodes at some point, or in the the Enter Flash Time Flash reunion episode beginning in a few weeks. But she has mentioned that she wants to pay it forward. Mentioned some really kind of high faluting sort of pay it forward cosmic balance things, and she's wearing an the Oregon Trail T-shirt, which I thought was pretty funny. Maybe now that Cisco actually got dumped, he could, you know, get with her, maybe? I don't know. But she could possibly be Dawn Allen or Jenny Ognatz XS, probably. I, I still can't decide who it could actually be, who this mysterious girl really would be. But a lot of people are thinking it's Dawn Allen. 
but then excess is also possibility. She's also writing the Speed Force writing that Barry was in the first episode. So where the hell has she actually come from? So the Speed Force writing is going to be a huge, huge mystery, I think, moving forward. And this could be the fact, this could be key to the future. Why is she writing it down? Just, it's completely bizarre. This could be a clue to maybe the future, or this could be some sort of proper fancy equation that could save everything and take on the thinker. Perhaps, we don't actually know. Now, while I was actually editing this episode, I did think that, well, when Vibe actually, or Cisco actually said that Alan always pays, well, Dawn Allen turns up, and she is also in a similar position as her mother in Central City Jitters as well. And it just seems incredibly likely they might go down the Dawn Allen route more. It would make just a bit more sense. But then we've got Cecile's twins as well, which again, do muck things up just a tad. So maybe this could actually be more likely to be Dawn Allen, but it's not confirmed just yet. But that is it for this video. Please drop a like. Please do subscribe. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.